In the 17th century, an inspiring host gathered people together, the purpose to increase their knowledge through conversation. These gatherings were called salons. Guests would debate a topic for the evening, mostly books, then eat and drink tea. Ladies and gentlemen, Ayo and Oka, in their article with the title, The Socratic Man Know Thyself and the Problem of Personal Identity, this was published in 2014. They wrote, and I quote, when Socrates, an Athenian moral philosopher, cautioned man know thyself, most scholars were inclined to have construed it from a banal perspective. Others saw the, this as a clarion call for knowledge of self, as the basis for true understanding of self, a possible mastery of self, development of same, and the society for the overall benefit of self and others, close quote. Our book discussion this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, resonates with this quotation. My name is Litokwa Mbedi, and I'm the Vice Chancellor and Principal of the great University of Johannesburg. Thank you for joining us for the second edition of the High Tea with the Vice Chancellor uh, for the academic year 2024. My guest this afternoon is Dr. Alistair Haupalelui Resikote. Ismail Mukwena. I wanted to make sure that I read all your names, including those that you see in the book. They are not on your uh, birth certificate. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Mukwena is Google's country director in South Africa. I want to pause here and I was like, damn Google. But I know you won't say anything because you don't want to upset your bosses. But I'm like, why don't they just say CEO, you know, Google South Africa. But anyway, maybe you'll tell us more about this. Um, Dr. Mukwena was named South Africa's best advertising and marketing leader by the Global Brands Awards. And this settles it, uh, colleague, because I used to look at uh, your book, you know, and I'm not jealous, but I'm like, our books are published by the same publisher. Yours was launched the day after mine, but it looks like in Zulu they say you are keke lazy. I'm, I'm lazy, you know. That now I realize that I'm mean, a lawyer, you're also a lawyer, that you're also a brand, a brand, you know, person. So you're doing a fantastic job. The other day, I was flying to, uh, you know, uh, to, where was I going now? Uh, with uh, one of the airlines in South Africa. I don't want to, ad I don't want to advertise them free of charge. And uh, I picked up the magazine and you know, I was so happy to see a review of your book. Well done, uh, colleague. Dr. Mkwena is an extraordinary professor of practice in digital marketing and technology at the other university, that is Northwest University Business School. We mention them because you know there is this uh, uh, um, series on, on television, The Empire. I don't know those who saw, who, who saw it. I like the scene where this lawyer comes to this guy and says in prison, uh, he gives him his card that I can help you with bail. And then he looks at it and says, what university is this? And this lawyer says, man, it's the same curriculum, just a different campus. <laughs> He's wearing like a pink suit. So he is an extraordinary professor at Northwest University Business School, where you also end your PhD. And he's also a member of council at the great University of Johannesburg. Most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, he's the author of the book we will discuss today with the title, Savings of Self Mastery, Bite-Sized Pep Talks to Unlock Greatness. It looks like this, those who have not yet acquired it, and I'll encourage you to acquire this amazing book. Because, you know, they say, blessed, uh, blessed is the hand that giveth, um, you know, if you support men like uh, Dr. Mukwena, men like me in our, you know, our efforts to contribute through our books, then you're doing a good job. And I'm saying this, and I know you didn't come for this, but I have to mention this. Dr. Mukwena has uh, donated or contributed 
50,000 rands towards our double our future impact to support academically deserving students at the College of at the College of Business and Economics. Somebody saying to me it was 100, but I know about 50. I think it's the other lucky guys who got 100. But you know what? Remember, same curriculum, different campus. Every rent counts, ladies and gentlemen. It's the rent we didn't have to transform lives to support academically deserving students. Thank you so much, Dr. Mkwen. Now, um, thank you so much for brewing tea with us uh, this um, uh, afternoon, reflecting on savings of self-mastery. I saw in your book you refer a lot to the Holy Bible, which is something that I really appreciate and I love. And, and, and um, you know, Socrates' words, words, men know thyself, you also find in the Holy Book. And you also refer to giving, which is also uh, in the book. And this is something that I have no doubt is something that, you know, uh, guides you in what you are doing, how you engage, and so on. The book has 37 chapters, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm sure you will agree with me that this afternoon we will not discuss each and every chapter. I will engage with Dr. Mukwena and then we'll provide time for you to also engage with him and learn from the master himself. So uh, the aim is not to discuss the entire book that you don't go and acquire it. Please go and get a copy. You won't regret it. I can tell you uh, that. So the timing is perfect. This is an election year, and we talk about self-mastery. I mean, to me, as, lead, as a leader, if you can't master self, how can you master others? You know, it's the question and the point that I was saying um, um, to, uh, to myself. Um, I, I want to start by asking you, um, you know, this question, and I saw it as an author, where after you have published the book, some other ideas come, and you say, hey, I should have added this one. Are there any other bit-sized pep talks that you feel, hmm, I should have added this to the book? So first of all, thank you very much, and hello, UJ. Hello. It's wonderful to be here, and yeah. hello to those that are joining us online. Um, I think I'm a, I'm a big believer of inclusivity. Right. So I want everybody who's here to feel welcome and to know that I'm here to give you a personal message. So I hope you'll walk away with something. Yep. Um, you know, Prof. Mbeni knows that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a marketing person yeah. and, uh, and marketers think about brand architecture and they think about segmentation models and portfolio of products. So of course there are a lot of chapters that are not in this book. Yeah. But those are coming. The architecture says yeah. there should be about 10 books, right? Right. So the next book will yeah. have the stuff that's not in there. Yeah. I just felt that if I gave up everything in one book, yeah. I'd yeah. have writer's block for books. Yeah. So, no, no, so no. I, yeah, I like yeah. that. You know, there's a saying loosely translated, it means a cow does not release all the dung at once, you know. So I'm not saying you're a cow, but you know, so you have to save something for next time. And um, definitely it's also an opportunity for the second uh, book. So, so we're looking forward to that book. I think it was Shakespeare who said something along the lines that uneasy rests the head that was the crown. Absolutely. Now in this, as a leader, I mean, I mean a, a, a man heading an organization as big as Google, obviously I think your head is one of those that doesn't rest <laughs> easy uh, because of, of that crown. But if one was to flip this, and reflecting on, 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 on your book, what message would you give, especially to our leaders, seeing that this year we're celebrating 30 years of democracy, we need to reflect on what is it that we have done right, there's a lot that we have done right, what is it that we can do better so that in the next 30 years we don't say the same thing. So um, what advice would you give to our leaders today? Thanks. So, um there were a couple of drivers behind me writing the book. So yeah. The first one was Luke 12, verse 48, that says, to, who, to whom much is given, much shall be expected. Yeah. So I felt that with the knowledge that I've acquired, I should share that knowledge. Knowledge is valuable only if it's shared, right? We've yeah. got a fantastic library in the building, yeah. and the library means nothing until people open the books, That's right. they gain knowledge, mm -hmm. and they use the knowledge to empower others and uplift mm -hmm. others. 
So it's not about us, it's about serving a higher purpose. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I wrote the book. Yeah. And then second thing was, given all the multiple balls that I juggle, and I read somewhere that don't brag about being busy, because yeah. everybody else is busy, that's right? right yeah. And sometimes being busy means you're not organized or you don't prioritize well. Right. Having said that, there is a lot on my plate, there is a lot that I do, and there's one reason. It's because leadership is an opt-in exercise. You choose a life of service yeah. when you want to be a leader. That's right. Don't be obsessed with being a manager or a CEO or a director or a dean or a VC, mm. unless yeah. you subscribe to servant leadership, which is mm. to serve people. Mm. So my advice to leaders today is self-mastery <coughs> helps you cope with mm. that which is around you. That's right. And the thesis is very simple. Mm. You can only control yourself. Yeah. You can't control anybody else in this room. I can't make you like me no matter how hard I try, mm. um, but I can control myself. I can't, I can't control what happens to me. Mm. All the inputs, all the stimuli that happens in life, mm. that's life. Uh, mm. But you can, you can determine how you respond and how you react. So yeah. I think um, I've learned to deal with multiple demands, multiple interests. Right. I've learned to manage my own patience. Mm -hmm. I've learned to forgive myself. Mm -hmm. I've learned to pace myself. Yep. I've learned to have self-awareness so that I'm not operating in a, you know, in a, in an echo chamber where I yeah. think I'm right and I only hear what mm -hmm. I want to hear. Mm -hmm. So I think all those things are important for leaders because mm -hmm. there's a lot that's expected from leaders. There's a lot that we need to get mm -hmm. done, but you only have so many hours in a day. Yeah. Your family needs mm -hmm. you. You need well-being time and me time. You need right. time to reflect as a leader. Mm -hmm. You need time with your friends in your yeah. kitchen cabinet, mm -hmm. and uh, and you need time for Netflix, okay, yeah. SABC, SABC, yeah. Yeah. and DSTV, yeah. and yeah. Netflix. Yeah. Now, thank you. Yeah. Now, thank you so much. In the book, you reflect on a number of people, your siblings, um, you know, your own family, your wife and kids. You, you reflect on your parents and, and it's quite touching. But uh, there's something that, you know, caught my attention. Your dad, who played for Kaiser Chiefs in the 70s. And when you say at his funeral, 4,000 people attended. How did you feed them? I know we're talking about the book, but you know, I, I'm asking this and I don't want to open wounds because I know in our culture, if you have many people attending, it's, it's a sign that the person has received a proper burial. But I was just curious that, yeah. you know, and you know in our culture you also provide something. It's important. If people don't eat, it's a sign of, you know, things didn't go well. So, so I blame Kaiser Chiefs. Yeah. <laughs> so when, when my dad passed away, they reached out, they yeah. came to visit us. <laughs> The week before the burial, they got involved, they made a financial contribution. And of course, all the big soccer magazines and radio yeah. shows and stuff spoke about it, yeah. spoke about his legacy, mm -hmm. and, and details of the funeral were publicized. So, lesson 101, if you don't want a big crowd, don't market, don't publicize. If you want lots of support, tell everybody about it. So people showed up, we planned, we made some estimates, there was some scenario planning, there was more than one cow available, mm -hmm. lots of chickens. Mm -hmm. um, and, and luckily, uh, our home then was on the boundary line, so there were no houses beyond. Yeah, yeah. So we had lots of parking wow. for many buses, wow. many cars, and chief supporters came from all over the country, so wow. we were quite fortunate. And, uh, yeah. It was, it was a big celebration as opposed to a sad moment. Yeah, yeah. wow, now that's special. Still on your dad, a wise man, you indicate that he said to you, and this is on corruption, and I'm hammering this this afternoon because it's a big issue that it's perceived, or I don't know, it's a common thinking that if you are a leader, you should be corrupt or you should, suc uh, 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 I almost said succumb, but you should eventually just give people what they want when they threaten you. Uh, uh, so that you can continue with, 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 with what you're doing. You indicate that, and I quote, uh, and these are the words, wise words uh, uh, from your father, of your father, that uh, he said to you, do an honest day work so you can sleep at night. Yeah, absolutely. Integrity mm. is what you do when nobody's watching. Yeah. You know, so mm. it's important especially for us who've been entrusted with leadership positions, yeah. whether in business or society or, or in academia or in politics, mm. to understand that mm. ours is, is a responsibility That's to serve. Right. Mm. We serve, we don't rule over mm. people. Yeah. And also the resources at our disposal are entrusted to us um, for safekeeping right. and to use for the betterment mm. of others as opposed mm. to us. Mm. But I think the deep insight is that human beings are driven by two things, love yeah. and fear. Yeah. Yeah. Those that operate from mm. a position of love, 
make the world a better place. Yeah. Those that operate from, from a position of fear mm. see the world as a place of scarcity, mm. so I need to hoard what I have, mm. there isn't mm. enough for, for all of us to, to, to get something, mm. and I want to buy favor with people, I fear yeah. losing mm. power. Yeah. So that's when, you know, mm. corruption happens, that's, right, that's yeah. when we buy favors, we mm. buy votes and all of that. So mm. I think mm. if we can work on self-mastery yeah. and get to a place of self-love, yeah. we will be able to radiate love. Wow, thank you so much. There's a question that I, you know, I struggle with, and I asked, you know, I did a leadership course at the Said Business School. I asked my professors, and I think you're the right person to be asked this question. In your view, are leaders born, or can you make yourself a leader? Yeah. It's funny you should say because I've been invited to uh, to speak at Said Business School in ah, May. Wow, well, so, so I'll tell them you said hi. Yeah, good school. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we're all born with everything that we need. Yeah. Everything that we need is inside us. Whether you're born with disabilities or not, yeah. we all have something inherent of value inside of us. And it's about what happens to you throughout yeah. your life. Yeah. It's about early childhood development. It's about yeah. baby parent bonding. Yeah. It's about, you know, breastfeeding. It's about those moments when you touch your baby and they touch your breast or your yeah. chest to make them feel that they belong. We all want to belong. And I think through that, um, teaching people that you must serve, you must believe in the greater good, you must serve a higher purpose, mm. you know, treat others as you, you want to be treated, right. be responsible with what you have. Mm. When there's a duality of good and bad, evil and good, choose good. Yeah. All those things are leadership qualities. That's right, yeah. They are wow. taught, yeah. they are observed, yeah. we lead by yeah. example, we yeah. role models. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We listen to yeah. what people have yeah. say yeah. around us. Yeah. We observe, and we observe, yeah. mm. and we suspend judgment. So yeah. I say in the book, it's important to be a student of life. Yes. I.e., observe what's around you, be a sponge, yeah. yeah. suspend judgment, suspend, yeah. you know, bias, suspend yeah. prejudice, mm. and just absorb and yeah. reflect later yeah. on. Right? Yeah. You must also be a student for life. And, yes. Uh, yes. And and yeah. And I mean, mm. your prof knows that I'm I'm busy with with a second doctorate and yeah. uh, and. And Prof Khan and Prof Petit always laugh at me and say, but Alistair, you can just do more research studies and publish. Why are you doing another doctorate? Where yeah. do you sleep? Yeah. But I think for me, it's also just to make a statement yeah. that education is important. Yeah. Get as many qualifications mm. as you want. Mm. It sends a positive mm. message to That's those right. who are sitting on the fence and wondering, should yeah. I or should I not? Right. We cannot have a situation, according mm. to UNESCO, mm. that 9 million girl mm. children in Africa mm. will never have access to education. Yeah. Unacceptable. And 6 million boys. Yeah. And look at the gender inequality yeah. there. We cannot have a dropout rate of 20% of kids below 12 in Africa and 40% of yeah. the youth. Yeah. You know, so, mm. and we can't have 60% yeah. adult literacy yeah. on the continent yeah. when we are the face of inequality yeah. and poverty. Yeah. So I think all those things are important. Yeah. And if your mission or your yeah. purpose mm. is to signal to others yeah. that a nation's best future mm. lies in good quality education, yeah. access to yeah. it, yeah. affordable yeah. quality education, yeah. Then I think you must do it. Then I think you must do ten qualifications. Yeah. You know, but mm. but also understand that you had the privilege of studying mm. and registering. Mm. When you make money, yeah. open the door for other people. That's right. Yeah. Divert yeah. your funds. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. make the ladder accessible to yeah. to others so that mm. as you rise, mm. you also lift. Yeah. No, this is important. Let's make education fashionable. And uh, most importantly, lifelong learning is, 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 is key. Uh, that is the message I'm taking from uh, your comments. In the book, and I'm jumping around, uh, it's in chapter 22, you talk about mentorship. It's something that is close to my heart. But now I want to bring something out in a different way and ask you, what message can you give this afternoon to mentees and mentors who when I talk about mentors, uh, uh, you know, let me start with mentees. There are people who've got a wrong perception about mentoring, which they think is like, make me what you are, and they don't want to put in the hours. Mm -hmm. Firstly, before I get into this, um, in your career as a mentor, did you ever have to say to a mentee, sorry, I can't do this, it's not working? Yeah, so yeah. Maybe, maybe let's start off with this distinguishing between yeah. you know, tutoring and mentorship yeah. and coaching, right? Yeah. Yeah. So mentorship happens to be something that you do with people that are generally younger, less yeah. experienced, yeah. and you share your experience right. as the mentor. Mm. You are much more instructive, you are much more explicit, yeah. you even solve problems for them. Yes. You yes. say, listen, I've encountered this and that, try this because I've tried it. 
Whereas coaching is for people with, who, are, who have more life experience, yeah. more work experience, yeah. more education experience. Right. And there we're giving them fishing rods. Yeah. Whereas with mentorship, we're teaching them yeah. how to fish yeah. and we give them fish. Right. So, there's, so, so yeah. I believe that with, with, with mentees, mm. there's an expectation that you will give. Yeah. And I think it is in that act of giving yeah. that we clarify expectations. Yeah. Some mentees have come to me and asked for mentorship. Mm. And meanwhile, all they wanted was to send me their CV. Yeah. And then That's when sneaky. I asked, yeah, but, but and I, disrespectful. I, I understand, but, 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 <laughs> yeah, but also, don't I blame somebody, yeah, also, especially in this culture, absolutely, uh, uh, in this climate of unemployment. Sorry, I'm telling you. Yeah. So, so I understand the need, and what what I do with that is I, I slow them down. Yeah. I say, okay. but let's talk about what mentorship is. Yeah, take it let's easy. Let's talk about what I can offer you yeah. and what you can offer me. Because yeah. we learn from each other. That's right. Yeah. yeah. We can get to the CV thing and all of that stuff. Yeah. And also, yeah. um, I can give you advice on how to structure your CV yeah. as part of our mentorship. Yeah. yeah. But I can also give you advice mm. on what professions, what mm. jobs to go for. Yeah. But we can't do that work until I know your life purpose. Exactly. Yeah. Life purpose yeah. gives you selection criteria. Yeah. yeah. You will make the wrong choices if you don't know who you are. That's right. A man or a woman without mm -hmm. life purpose is rudderless. It's like a yeah. ship without a rudder. So before I even say, mm -hmm. okay, maybe apply here or I know this person, because they say, please use your network, WhatsApp this to all your friends. Yeah, and say, no. I don't know you, I can't vouch for you, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's the right thing yeah. for us to do. So let's yeah. spend a couple of weeks mm -hmm. covering ground like, what are your values? Who mm -hmm. are you? What drives you? What do you want to achieve? Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. have a purpose? Um, and what is this in aid of, you know, mm. um, so that we can make decisions for the right reasons. And mm. yeah, so I've seen that and I've had people that have mentored me. Mm -hmm. But I also want to say to young people is that today you're lucky you've got LinkedIn, you've mm. got social media. Mm. People broadcast their lives every day. Mm. Prof and I are notorious of broadcasting our lives and what we do. Mm -hmm. Not because we want to be famous, mm -hmm. we want to share, we want to inspire. Mm. Now you can go up into LinkedIn or any of these platforms and read up on, you can do a Google search. Mm. We process 100,000 searches a second, 8.2 billion searches a day. You can be one of those statistics, you can search people that you're interested in, learn from them, study their lives, mm. and draw lessons. Mentorship does not have to involve a conversation yeah. or contact. Yeah. A person can be your mentor without them having met you or spoken to you, mm. but you take what you, what's relevant to you from mm. their lived experiences. So mm. I think mentorship is broader than, yeah. Prof, I want to meet you, please yeah. mentor me. Yeah, no, thank you so much. Let me move on to mentors. Uh, one thing that I've experienced is that sometimes you get mentors who don't want to let go because somebody has to grow and rise. At some point, you have to let your mentors, uh, mentees, uh, grow and there are mentors who don't want to let go and not in a positive way you know it's like the story that is as old as hills uh, of a master and an apprentice where the master doesn't want the apprentice to really uh, grow and become bigger than the master Prof, you're absolutely right and this takes us back to the evolution of yeah. mentorship eventually into coaching yeah I think the problem with a lot of mentoring relationships is that there's no objectives. Yeah. There's no vision. Yeah. We don't know when <coughs> summited mm. Kilimanjaro. Mm. So we keep going. Also, some mentors get obsessed with giving answers. Yeah. It makes them feel good, they reflect, mm. and you know, it becomes a cathartic exercise to talk mm. about your bad boss, your bad experience. Now you're sharing, mm. you, you're exchanging knowledge, you're sharing all these lessons. It helps you heal as a mentor. So sometimes we as mentors um, haven't mastered ourselves, you know, so we perpetuate or we create this dependency on the mentee. Mm -hmm. The mentee is used to coming to you and within five minutes you'll solve their issue. The mentorship session today lasted 10 minutes instead of, a, instead of an hour because they came looking for a key to a door. Right. As opposed to learning how to create access to opportunities, you know, so fishing rod versus giving them fish. So I think it's important to have boundaries. That's right. I think it's important for the mentee to do work. Right. Yeah. To write down their objectives, to mm -hmm. think about their lives, mm -hmm. to structure questions, to manage the appointments, to set up time with you, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I think it's important for the mentor to also mm -hmm. say, listen, we've reached a point where we've, we've reached all our objectives. Mm -hmm. I need to make space for another person who mm -hmm. needs to be mentored. Mm -hmm. You have graduated into being a coachee. Mm -hmm. So go find a coach. Mm -hmm. And I've taught you, I've equipped you with the life skills, but it mm -hmm. cannot go on for perpetuity. Right. No, thank you so much for, for sharing that. Um, you, in chapter 15, you talk about connecting with nature 
every day. It's something I'm taking with me. I do personally connect with nature. You know, from time to time we go to the Kruger of my family and I come back rejuvenated. But you know, you 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 showed me something that connecting with nature is not just it's good going to the Kruger. But you talk about watering your garden, you know, slowing down and appreciating a bird that is singing there, you know, uh, or that is building a nest and so on. Do you want to elaborate on this? Yeah, so, so, there, so there's quite a few things there. First of all, nature will humble you. Yeah. I don't know anybody here who's not scared of a tsunami or floods. Yeah. Or heavy downpour. Yeah. I don't know anybody here who loves the coldest day in winter. Yeah. I don't know anybody here who enjoys walking mm. through a felt fire. Mm. You know, I don't know anybody here who celebrates when there's a locust infestation that kills mm. crops and undermines food security. Mm. So nature is to be respected. Mm. The str strongest swimmers mm. get pulled in by a riptide and they drown. Yeah. So we need to understand, mm. as human beings, that when you stand at the foot of Table Mountain, mm. that's how small, short, and insignificant you are. Mm. So your ego should mm. never be part of your identity, yeah. your makeup. Your self-esteem yeah. is mm. what God has given you so that yeah. you can navigate mm. the world and society. So, so that's the first thing about nature. Yeah. On a practical level, I say in the book, start your day with rest and end your day with, with rest. rest yeah. That's because of the daily commute I do yeah. to work. Mm. I wake up in the morning and I'm in a rush and then I rush the kids through mm. their breakfast, take them to school and then I learn that I'm becoming an angry person. Mm. And I'm anxious and I'm stressed mm. and actually mm. I want to start the day smiling, mm. all chirpy, mm. take my time. So now I wake up a little bit earlier, I do those things, I've got plants that are being thirsty for water, mm. they're temperamental, if I don't water them for two days, they wilt. Mm. In the morning they are terrible, they look terrible. If I water them that morning, in the afternoon, mm. they're back to full bloom. Yeah. And just that exercise mm. of, this is God's power mm. in action, is mm. such an important reminder of who's in control. Mm. And it's also symbolically a reminder that only that which you water grows. Yeah. We can also water bad habits. Yep. They grow and they change us. Yeah. If we water good habits, they mm -hmm. become second nature. Wow. So for me, that was important. And then I also mm. learned that mm. my kids and I, we all have sinus issues and pollen. Oh, this is what I'm struggling with. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Plant spent bloom around your house. Uh -huh. Carbon sequestration yeah. that happens with trees. Spent yeah. bloom mm. is the best carbon basin. It mm. gives us oxygen. Mm. You know, we have an issue with global warming today. Mm. The seven, 17 SDG goals. Unfortunately, 80% of them are off track in terms of progress. So climate mm. action is something we can all do. If you all plant the spectrum, you're releasing more oxygen in the air. Mm. There's a lot of deforestation happening in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 70% of this deforestation is due to agricultural activity. Agriculture is important because it leads to food, mm. to food security. Mm. Mm. In our country, 6.3 million people are going to go to bed hungry tonight. Yeah. And yet we waste 10 million tons of food every day. Mm -hmm. So we need to find a better way, right? Mm -hmm. And 55% mm -hmm. of Africans are employed mm -hmm. in agriculture. Right. So it's not about saying let's stop agricultural activity so that mm -hmm. we can have forests and we can have trees. Mm -hmm. But it's about how do we sustain agricultural practices while planting more trees, preserving the trees that we have. But every single person has to plant a number of trees. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if all of us here planted five trees? Yeah. So I went to visit my brother-in-law a couple mm. of weeks ago, mm. and uh, he's just bought a plot, and he's planted 25 fruit trees. Mm. And I was, in awe. I was like, wow, this is amazing. You're going to save money. You're going to make money from selling your produce. And he said to me, how many fruit trees do you have? And I said, only one lemon tree. And he said, how many trees do you have? I said to him, I've got about 10 trees. Mm. And he said to me, do you, do you not think that you should be planting more fruit trees in your garden so that a you've got more fruit mm. and all of that stuff and mm. and you also creating more oxygen mm. i went straight to the nursery the following mm. day came home with six trees mm. it's going to be a couple of years before mm. they in full bloom mm. but, I, but i think i'm doing my bit to, yeah. to, to reduce carbon footprint in the world well i was counting you know i have we have not i okay we have my wife planted them you know that i'm claiming <laughs> that we've got three and one is a fruit tree that i'm telling you we stayed in that place for 10 years, so we never enjoy this because when it's time, something goes wrong when they're about to be enjoyed. But maybe I must be patient and continue right. to, to, to water them. Chapter 13, chapter 30, one of my favorite, all of them are my favorite, but chapter 30, be comfortable with silence. It's something I want you to elaborate and share with those that have joined us in this auditorium and also uh, online, because I'll tell you, I attended a seminar on negotiations, and one of the things I picked there 
was be comfortable with silence. And I did this once in a family situation, tense as the oldest son who had to really sit in with people who were hell-bent at really doing what they liked. And I just remembered that seminar and I sat quietly and looked at them. They asked their stupid questions and answered themselves, but in the end, as a family, we got what we wanted uh, to, to do. Please uh, talk a little bit about the importance of that. I know in the book you talk about somebody who talks too much, who's got verbal diarrhea. Also, you can use it for that. I'm sure in business, also in tough negotiations. But I'd like you to share some more with our audience about the power and the importance of being comfortable with sounds. Because, you know, people tend to try and say something to break that awkward uh, situation where everybody's quiet. Whereas that is the time when to shut up. Yeah. So, so there's a number of things there, right? So as we're thinking about self-mastery, what exhausts you during the day? What, what saps your energy? It's anxiety, it's mm. anger, it's insecurity, it's feeling inadequate, it's imposter syndrome, I'm going to be caught out, people will see that I'm not as good as I claim to be. Mm. And what do we do to make up? Mm. We tend to talk and try and <laughs> fill the space and market ourselves and yeah. give opinions and, mm. and, 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 and but we're not coming from a healthy place. We're coming yeah. from a place mm. of deprivation. Mm. So the book talks about work on yourself, mm. fix yourself, and right. nobody's perfect, but yeah. work on yourself so that you have, you have less need mm. to prove yourself. Mm. You have less need to try and win people over, you know? So that's the basis of it. Also, I mean, physiologically, God has given us two ears and one mouth for a reason, mm. so that we listen more than we speak. And mm. I think that's an important principle. Mm. And the third principle is that there's an expression in um, Setswana, and you will know this, which yeah. says, mm. which yeah. means a, a word uttered cannot be retracted. Yeah. Only a finger that you point can you retract. Yeah. So oftentimes, mm. we say words that we shouldn't say. Yeah. A, because they break people, mm. they spread misinformation, mm. disinformation, they propagate bias, yeah. and racial prejudice, and right. tribal prejudice, mm. and gender inequality, mm. and all these things, right? Mm. So, Unless you know that you're a net positive contributor, yeah. keep your thoughts and your words yourself. Yeah. Mm. Also, in negotiation, it's a very helpful tool. Mm. Silence is, silence is golden, golden, but speech is silver. Yeah. Mm. You, can, you can really influence negotiations just through silence. Yeah. Also, as a manager, when it's time to deliver difficult feedback, mm. if you're uncomfortable delivering difficult feedback, Mm. You might make up and try and soften the blow mm. and say so many things yeah. and end up contradicting the mm. message you're trying to, to that's, deliver. That's right. Yeah. So being comfortable with silence is about being a person of fewer words, mm -hmm. but also knowing when to just keep quiet, yeah. be at peace, mm. listen, mm. Um, and also reflect. Mm. A moment of silence is a moment of reflection. We can't learn unless we reflect. That's right. We all have to journal. We all have to gather our thoughts. We have to make a list of our thoughts. We have to make a list of our feelings. Mm. We have to launder the thoughts and the feelings. Yeah, yeah. And if the thoughts and the feelings are negative, we must force ourselves to find evidence yeah. to corroborate that yeah. stuff. Mm. Nine times out of 10, you won't find the evidence. Wow. And what's happening? There are voices in your head. Right. Critic, yep. pessimist, yep. judge. Yep. These three voices yep. drown out the optimist. Wow. The optimist is what you need in mm. self-mastery. Wow. Now, if you don't take stock of the voices in your head, if you don't become a conductor of the chorus, of yeah. the choir in your head, mm. you will not have control over the music that's playing in your head. That's right. Yeah. And if your soundtrack is one of self-judgment, self-critical, mm. look at the rate of suicide today in society. Yeah, it's, a, it's a big face, challenge, yeah. Even mm. close here at home. So mm. mental well-being, mental wellness mm. is very, very important. That's right. Yeah. And we have to take responsibility mm. for that. We have to look for help. Yeah. There is no shame in saying I need help. Mm. You know, mm. we all are struggling mm. with different things. Yeah. No matter your age, no mm. matter your position in life, mm. no matter how much money you earn, mm. which family you come from, mm. everybody has their burden, has their issues, their challenges. Mm. I struggle with a lot of issues on mm. a daily basis. Mm. But because mm. I am now living in this world of self-mastery, I know my triggers. Mm. When this happens, I know what I, what's happening, how I'm feeling, how I'm about to react, mm. and I just pause and count to 10. Mm. You know, I arrived in the parking and I needed to send an email to somebody. Mm. I sent draft number six. Mm. Mm. Draft number six mm. was the one that I was proudest of. Yeah, yeah. And not the first five. Mm. The mm. first five were coming from a human reaction. Mm. The sixth 
draft came from somebody who cares, who has empathy, mm. who respects other people, mm. and who understands that we're all battling with stuff. Yeah. So yeah. having grace yeah. and extending grace to mm. people mm. is the core of self-mastery. Wow. Wow, that's special, ladies and gentlemen. Um, um, you know, this thing about being comfortable with silence and, and all reminds me of a, a series on uh, one of the streaming networks. I'm not going to advertise them. They didn't pay us. Uh, that you'll know a life, a lot of things that have a lot to do with law. And many of you who watch television will know. It's a series called The Lincoln Lawyer. And uh, on the wall, there is this fish with a hook. And there are words underneath, only if I kept my mouth shut. This is something I just want to add to being comfortable with silence. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to open this up so that you can also get a chance to interact with uh, Dr. Mokwena. Uh, we can talk for days about this. So this is just a taste of what's in the book. I mean, the wisdom. Uh, I enjoyed this book. It's a type of book that, you know, it's written in an accessible manner. When you talk about uh, bite-sized, you know, it's not like long Mississippi stories. You go straight to the point. It's a book that, uh, you know, there are books you read and you give away, but this is a book that you want to keep and then from time to time go back to it, especially as a leader. And here, leadership, we're not only talking about positional leadership, it's also, you know, leading yourself, you know, and leading... Uh, uh, by example and influencing others. You'll never know who's inspired by you and how you do things. And at the end, this will make us really an amazing uh, uh, group of people, amazing nation, and so on. I would like to open this up to take uh, uh, inputs from uh, those that are present here, but also online. Can I also just make yes. one point about yeah. the structure of the book? Yeah. So Prof speaks about the fact that it's bite-sized chunk pep talks. Yeah. Sometimes what you need is just five or ten minutes yeah. just to read something mm. before you're about to get into a meeting, a presentation, mm. an exam. Mm. You need a quick yeah. in, you know, injection of some mm. ideas, questions mm. to help you think, yeah. but also out of respect for neurodiversity, yeah. which I know is close to your heart. Yes, yes. The chapters are four or five pages long. Yeah. I have no business writing 30, 40, 50 mm. page mm. chapters. Mm. A, the reader feels like they haven't achieved anything, they haven't finished yeah. the chapter. Mm. And people are busy. Yeah. And I don't want to mm. keep somebody reading for two hours just to get through one chapter to get through my point. Yeah. When they have families, jobs, mm. lives, mm. and other things. Mm. So the chapters are short for mm. a reason, yeah. to get to the point, yeah. to accommodate those that mm. do not want long stories, to mm. accommodate those mm. that get irritated with yeah. repetition and tautology and long-windedness, mm. mm. but also those that struggle with concentration space. Yes. So yes. Mm. the idea is the book mm. is meant to be your friend. Yeah. It's the chapters are in no chronological order. There's yeah. no sequence. You can jump mm. from 1 to 10 yeah. to 15 yeah. mm. and come back in this process. Yeah. This exercise is to mm. keep it iterative mm. and for you to pause. It's yeah. not a sprint to the it's finish. Flat. It's about delving in the yeah. moment, pausing, yeah. reflecting, yeah. soaking on it. Yeah. And, um, mm. and yeah. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm round of an applause for Dr. Mukwele. <laughs>
I try and do that. Yeah. I plan species, I write them, I, my mind doesn't stop working, and I try and silence this, this CPU mm. uh, so that I can sleep and rest. Mm. But I write a lot and I reflect a lot. So when mm. you ask me to come and speak, I don't need teleprompter, I don't need slides, I, don't need, I just speak from the heart mm. because I prepare. So mm. routine mm. makes you prepared for the opportunity. Wow. And everything, every conversation is, is important because you're speaking to somebody, you're impacting somebody, mm. choose how you want to impact them. Mm. I, I love your question. I've struggled with that all my life. Yeah. Um, highly ambitious people, highly productive people live in the future, not in the present. Mm. We're never happy with what we achieve, you're always thinking of the next thing, we never celebrate. When people praise you, you hate compliments, you're like, oh no, I'm just, just, it's just my work, you know, what choice, you know, mm. <laughs> what choice do I have, you know, those kind of things, right? But the truth is you need to be present. Right. And you don't know that you will wake up tomorrow. Tomorrow's mm. not guaranteed. Mm. Right? And, and anxiety leads to hypertension, to strokes, to heart problems. All of that is a very busy machine that just doesn't stop. Mm. So I think we must stop, smell the roses, walk barefoot, touch the ground with your feet, feel the grass, you know, humble mm. yourself to the surroundings. Mm. And don't just, of course, have, have plans. And it's important to plan in three time horizons. Horizon one is current. Horizon two is kind of the intermediate period. Horizon three is in the future. I speak in the book about objective setting, goal setting. We've got relationship goals, we've got belonging goals, we've got acquisition goals, we've got achievement goals. But also we know that life is about managing and energies and you know, so you've got spiritual energy which is anchored in your purpose, you've got physical energy, go to gym, exercise. You know, walk mm. up the stairs, don't use the lift, mm. plus there's load shedding. And uh, there's psychological, yeah. psychological energy, yeah. there's emotional energy, there's mm. intellectual energy. So mm. make sure that all those energies are fulfilled so mm. that you are centered. Mm. And that helps, that brings you back to the present. Mm. And if, you, if you're bad at that, find somebody. I speak in the book about have a Sherpa. A Sherpa is somebody who mountain climbers will know, helps you climb a mountain. Mm. Have somebody, mm. a coach in your pocket, mm. somebody mm. who will call you out and say, mm. you're doing that thing again. Mm. You, 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 you're shooting down compliments. Mm. You're planning to the future, you haven't even celebrated mm. this. The ink yeah. hasn't dried. So yeah. we need people to, to keep us accountable. Definitely, and we must accept that as leaders. You know? I like when you talk about a wingmate. So it changed. I used to talk about the wingman because I watched a lot of dog fights. Yeah. Not like real dogs fighting. It's a military thing for uh, when fighter pilots fight in the air and then it's a skill. So you need a wing, a wing man, but wing mate yeah. to watch your six o'clock, you know. So you need such a person. I'll tell you, I have a few and some are present here today who tell me that, Prof, you didn't sit right and so on. And I graciously <laughs> accept. Oh, Prof, you are talking too fast. And uh, it's not easy to accept, you know, that it makes you reflect and in, increasingly I say thank you because there are people who want to see you being the best that they know you are. And I thank them, they know themselves, they are present here today. It's definitely lifelong. Nobody's perfect. Perfection is only accessible to God, not us. No human being is perfect. We yeah. all work in progress. And yeah. the circumstances around you keep changing. Yeah. You meet a different challenge every day that requires you to react. Mm. And we grow. I'm 48. I'm nowhere near the end of my life. Mm. And I'm not a finished product. So mm. we evolve. So it's a life, lifelong commitment. But mm. it gets easier with time mm. when you identify triggers, when you're very clear on your strengths. The strengths, strengths by the way, let's, let's redefine strengths and weaknesses very quickly. Strengths are the things that you love doing. They give you energy, they energize you, they excite you. Those are strengths. Weaknesses are not the things you're bad at. Weaknesses are the things you hate doing. You're right? You might be required to do them because you need to pass. But you hate doing those certain things. Those are your weaknesses. Find a way around how do you manage your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Find a way of outsourcing the weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Partner yourself, compliment yourself who, with somebody who loves the things you hate. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that's a weakness. Mm -hmm. Development areas, on the other hand, mm -hmm. are things that you need to help you succeed and mm -hmm. things that you should build a relationship with and work on. 
So strengths, the things we love that give us energy, weaknesses, the things we hate doing, they bog us down, mm -hmm. they get the worst out of us, we do them grudgingly, mm -hmm. outsource them if you can, partner with somebody who can help you, develop in areas are things you need to fix and work on, and the first future studies and mm -hmm. lifelong mm -hmm. learning. Thank you very much for shining a spotlight on that. My fam I'm very privileged. I come from a family where there's a preponderance of teachers. Everybody in my family is a teacher. My grandparents were teachers. When I was six, I saw my grandfather graduating with a postgraduate, uh, post my grandmother graduating. They were all educators. Mm -hmm. My parents were also teachers. My father was a teacher. He stopped. He played for Casa Chiefs. He stopped. He became an entrepreneur. My mother is a retired professor. She has, she has Academies don't retire. My mother is not retired. I've been trying to tell her retire properly. Yeah. But she yeah. thinks we want to, uh, you know, outsource things to her and looking after kids. But it's not that. Yeah. But she was a big inspiration. So mm. was my father. And mm. I think for me, I learned the art of serving other people, sacrificing mm. for the betterment of society. So when it was time for me to think about, I've written a book on self mastery which says you can be a good person if you work on yourself mm. for the benefit of others because we're all interconnected, right? Mm. It's Ernest Hemingway who said in his famous novel, ask not for whom the bell tolls, it, pel it tolls for thee. Mm. So if mm. someone next to you has a problem, you have a duty of care to help if you're in a position to help. And that's why I've launched the Alistair McGuinness Education Fund mm. so that I can be part of the solution. Mm. That's why when my father died, we launched the Johnny Mukwena Football Foundation to invest in township soccer mm. development. So those are signals that I picked up from home that said, to whom much is given, much is expected. Mm. And the things that God blesses you with are entrusted in your hands as a test to see what you're going to do to further his kingdom. Not for your own consumption and pleasure. So, you know, live off the interest, but leave the capital amount for other people. So, you know, blessed is the hand that, that uh, give it, you know. So I think we need to just create a movement of givers as a nation. We need to be more giving. We yeah. take, 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 you know, but we need to give um, because it is in giving that we receive. So one of it is uh, reading fatigue, where you're like, okay, I've exhausted this topic. And I reached that point also where I was like, I've read so many self-help books, I want to write my own book. A, representation is important. Yeah. We need more African voices, yeah. South African voices, black voices, male. Oh. We need so many examples. So I decided to be a sacrifice and do that. And I say in the book, don't just mm. consume knowledge, generate knowledge. And mm. we hear generating knowledge as people in the education sector. So I think that's important. The second bit is books I gamble. The back cover will give you a sense, the, the, the title will give you a sense. And because we believe in lifelong learning, we buy books and we mm. read books. Yeah. And halfway through a book, you're like, this book is not talking to me. And the lesson there is when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Mm. That book is a misfit. But I also say in the book, your loss is somebody else's gain. Mm -hmm. The 300 rand that you spend that didn't benefit you, gift it to somebody. Yeah. So what do I do? I leave books um, in aeroplane seat pockets. I leave books in hotel rooms uh, that I've enjoyed. They've served me and I want to pass them on or I hated them because I buy them at airports. So mm -hmm. I do that. I gift yeah. um, something of value. It's yeah. not relevant to me, but it might speak to you. So yeah. that's, that's your gift. Run with it. Yeah. Um, and then also I think that... Um, Writing styles need to evolve. Yeah. You know, we are talking about a world of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mm. We're talking about situational leadership. We're talking about, in teaching, we're talking about meeting the learner, the student, where you find them. Mm. It's about personalization. So mm. I think we need a diversity of writing skills. We need short chapters, long chapters. We need simple language, accessible. And some people, mm. you know, are intellectual. So, so I do think we need a diversity. And unless we create literature ourselves, we will constantly become, you know, consumers of literature. So I'm completely with you. I do reach a point where I'm like, for the next three months, I'm not reading, I'm not buying a book, but I will continue writing. Self-mastery is about understanding your thoughts and your feelings. Mm. Know yourself. So the first thing, so you can put the word self before any virtue. Self-knowledge, self-love, self-forgiveness, self-patience, you know, well, self-well-being, all those things. Self-promotion. It's okay to promote yourself. So I think the music that's playing in your head determines the words that come out of your mouth. Mm. The timing of you speaking is also determined by what's going on inside you. 
If you feel this is a moment, something is wrong and I want to speak up, that's the right thing to do. Mm. If there's an argument and, and you feel like, okay, I want to win this argument, I want to retaliate, sometimes it's good to pause and reflect and, just, and not, don't fight back and just keep quiet. And then choose response number three in your head. Like I spoke earlier, I had six emails that I drafted. Mm. But the first five would not have been good. Mm. The last one was. So mm. you have to determine what's, what's the right timing for you. But you can't do that unless you validate your own feelings, mm. understand what's going on inside your heart and your mind. Because mm. there has to be a synchronicity between mm. the head and the heart, right? Mm. Um, and then when these two are confused, the gut kicks in. Yeah. But you have to master that. It doesn't happen just, you know, by itself. Yeah. Uh, if I may add, also thinking before one speaks. Uh, have you ever had that feeling that some people just talk because they have a platform? They never reflect it. They make wild statements, which eventually reflect uh, on the speakers themselves. Because they just open their mouths. And I believe as one grows older, one also must be able to evolve. You talk about evolution. To know when to just shut up. <laughs> and to know when to speak. I don't know how many of you have heard that this person is quiet, but when he or she speaks, you, 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 you can hear him or her, or he or she is heard. Selfishness, self-centeredness, self-serving, um, you know, tendencies come from a place of need. It's a signal that there's a need. Need for belonging, need to look good, need to, you know, outshine other people, need to belong, need to impress, need to get a promotion. Um, and we forget, we forget that leadership is not about ruling over people, it's about serving people. Serving people is about understanding what do people need and how can you help them. It's about understanding what people's aspirations are and how you can help them access their aspirations. Now, leaders obviously also have ambition. They also have things they want to achieve. But you can do that in an inclusive fashion. So as a, a big part of self-mastery self is about being inclusive. So as I pursue my goals, I want a sense of shared value. I want a win-win. I want people around me to support my aspirations because they know that I have their back. They know that they can locate their own success in my journey. And I can locate my own success in their journey. I only look good if my team looks good. Yeah. You know, as a leader, there's very little that you do operationally. Mm. You know, there's three fears you operate in you. Either an operator or a manager or a leader, right? Mm. And you, you can't always be across the three. You need mm. people with you. Yeah. So. Follow us, look for inspiration. Follow us, look for compassion. Mm. Follow us, look for care. Mm. Follow us, look for motivation. Mm. And, self, and, and, and they also look for selflessness. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're serving your own interests, you're not ticking any of those boxes. Mm -hmm. You're not meeting the needs of your followers and your mm -hmm. team. And um, yeah. you're not leading, you know? So that's a very valid question. Yeah. No, thank you very much. I'm sorry. Uh, I saw a number of hands, but this is where we'll have to stop, given uh, the fact that we have exhausted our time. The aim, as I said at the beginning, is not to cover everything. There's a lot of wisdom in the book. Please go get yourselves a copy uh, of the book, which is available at reputable bookstore uh, stores uh, uh, and also ex exclusive uh, books. Ladies and gentlemen, um, please join me in thanking uh, Dr. Mkwena with a warm round of an applause. University of Johannesburg, the future reimagined.